So last time, I think we were here, right? We are talking about PLB bits. Generating a virtual address. PLB, translation group for side over. That is doing <coughs> translation. And PLB, hopefully, provide this current address. And based on that, you are accessing main memory. So that is main memory. Okay. And you have uh, hard disk. Hard disk, more solid state drive in case. Uh, and, and cache is something else. Cache is uh, depending on depending on CPU vendor, and cache could be placed here or here. Cache could be placed here, and using virtual address to access, or you know can be placed here. So using cache can be accessed with this address. It depends on implementation. Uh, so let's but let's remove it. Let me remove this one. Because we are, uh, we want to focus on address translation by this class. Only address translation. Come on, let's see. So, what choice takes? Virtual states, uh, depending on this address size, if it is solid proof, then virtual states size is 4 gigabyte. That's 2 to the power of solid proof. Okay? And physical, uh, physical address space, depending on this uh, physical address. So, physical address, uh, the width is 36 feet, for example. If 36 bit, then you are creating a uh, non public space, physical space. Two to the power of uh, 36, then 64 gigabyte, gigabyte physical space, physical space. Then actual main memory, actual memory can be placed within that uh, physical space. So let me draw this way. So it's six feet. A physical address is creating this physical space. It's a maybe price of space, right? Space. Actually, the thing is there. The thing is. And then uh, motherboard designer, computer motherboard, okay. uh, making that decision to how where to place actual main memory. Okay. You are creating 64 gigabyte of physical space. Then probably you want to place, sorry, 16, sorry, 16, 16 gigabyte of physical actual main memory. So you are only consuming, you are using one that one force, one force of this, one force, one force of this space. Okay. So it is motherboard manufacturer is doing that. Right? 16 gigabyte actual memory. So what you want to do is, so let me now uh, remove. Virtual space and virtual space and physical memory uh, is logically divided into uh, divided into typically four kilobytes, four kilobytes, four kilobytes. Then 
I want to do this, right? This one is called virtual page number zero. Virtual page number one, and so on. Then the last one, virtual page number one. One million minus one. So million is 10 times four square. 10 times four square. Okay. And then uh, you want to do this. Okay, the first virtual page is actually located located so this one is probably page called page number 16 gigabyte divide by 40 okay four four meg right four meg different page called locations no problem two meg page called page number two meg so this one second virtual page uh, it's mapped to it's for page number one. One million. One million. Something like this. Operating system is uh, doing this map. OS. Okay. And for that, OS you need to create page table. Page table in main window. Let me uh, draw. Page table separate that is located in the main menu. Let me look here. Same color, right? Blue, blue. That's also memory. So inside the memory, you are not you. The operating system is creating page table. So page table is composed of what? P, P, P. Page table. Page Page table is composed of page table entries, right? Entry. First entry, second entry, and so on. So how many entries you need? Uh, because you have one million, one million uh, virtual pages, uh, you need one million entries. So first entry contains the translation information for first one, for virtual page number zero. This one, virtual page number zero. What you have to have inside here, you need a pitch card page number. That's what you need to have inside the PT. So in this case, uh, this one is like two, you know, two a million. Right? So what you have to have is two million. And uh, second entry, second entry uh, contains uh, translation information for virtual page number one. So in this mapping, that is mapped to page called page number one million. So what you have to have is first one million. Page called, this one is page called page. Page called page. The operating system is creating that in the page. Okay. To execute your application. And then, uh, what is TLB this? TLB this is, uh, what is TLB first? TLB is uh, small cache. Small uh, cache uh, for storing uh, recently accessed, recently accessed page table entries. If you access uh, this one, this one, then uh, TLB contains the entry. That's one some the tag information, so virtual page, not for virtual page number, but some part, some of, some of virtual page number. So if you remember, if you remember, it's a TLB structure. TLB stores, TLB stores, not only page per page number, but some of this upper part of virtual page number, except index. So uh, except, except this index bit. In this case, three bit is used to index TLB. So remaining 17 bit, 17 bit is stored in TLB. Okay. Uh, so, you know, again, TLB is a small cache, small cache for storing recently accessed page table entries. So, uh, what if, what if, uh, so you, you know, execute 
uh, CPU, you, your program execute LDR or SDR memory read or write exception. Then, you know, virtual address is generated based on SAR0, R1. SAR1 is 1000. Then you want to read uh, uh, what from location 2000. So virtual address 2000 will be you know, provided to TLB. So TLB is doing uh, the lookup, TLB lookup. You see, in TLB contains the translation information. So TLB has translation information for the TLB hit. Then TLB can provide you know, this process. But what if TLB does not TLB does not contain translation information. That is for the TLB means. In TLB means, uh, there are two cases. Sim simple TLB means. Simple TLB means is um, the page you want to access. The page, is, so let's say the virtual page number three. That is not, that this one is not located in main memory. That is still in pipes. So uh, if TLB uh, does not contain translation information, you know, TLB will miss. But if the page you are accessing, let's say, you know, virtual page number zero. Okay, virtual page number zero is already, already placed in main memory. Okay. So that is simple TLB. All you have to do is then, okay, there is translation information. You have to look up this table, then find PD, and place that guy into here. Place that here. See, that is a simple TLB. Again, simple TLB means uh, the page you want to page you want to access is already already present, already in main memory, already loading from you know, hard disk. So all you have to do is you need only translation information. So look up this page table and place it here. That's that's what you have to do. Simple TLBs. Simple merely TLBs. And what is page port? Page port is this case. So let's say you know you execute some instruction, then I happens to access some location in virtual page number three. Then that virtual page number three. Is not located in main memory. It is, you know, in hard disk. What you have to do is it's very complicated process. It takes a lot of time. The hard disk is so slow, so you have to place that guy into somewhere, some some empty slot. They copy the page into uh, main memory, and also translation information. After that, translation information can be placed. In. So two things, you know, copy a uh, page in hard disk into main memory, and uh, that information uh, in the TL. That is taking a lot of time. And what, pro what process you have to uh, go through in case of page problem? It's gone.
first KLBB is first, right? Uh, uh, how KLBB is simple KLBB is handled? That is typically handled by that is typically handled by hardware. And a depend on CPU, uh, CPU is providing option. You can do it. You can handle that. Uh, actually, that is the exception. KLBB is that is the exception. One kind of exception. So you know, I told you there are two kinds of very important events in CPU, inter and exception. Uh, in exception, we have studied undefined, very simple in case, undefined exception. In PLB is one kind of exception. exception. If PLB is happens, uh, you know, you execute LDR instruction, LDR, then then if you uh, think about pipeline instruction patch, uh, during instruction patch, a TLB list can happen. You are reading instruction, right? So you have a forward counter, forward counter. Then uh, LDR instruction, let's say it is located at what? Located at uh, which location? Uh, five zero. Five zero. Five zero. Then you know five zero virtual address is provided to TLB. Okay? And TLB lookup should be performed, right? And TLB lookup, you know, if it, it turns out to be TLB list, okay? then exception. exception. Then what, what should happen? So the exception can be handled by hardware or software. If that is handled in software, if you remember, uh, interrupt discussion, look at this. That is called pre-catch abort, pre-catch abort. Program counter will be uh, changed to, change to 0 C, pre-catch abort. Pre abort. Uh, but, uh, you know, that is very complicated process, right? So you have a TLB miss, then you have an exception, and for encounter, for encounter will be changed to zero, eight, right? So branch, some instruction, right? branch of pre-patch handler, right? that will be executed. Right? So after, so you are hello world program, right? And LDR instruction, you have pre-patch of work, pre-patch. Then ISI, exception service continue. Then you have to come back. When you come back, then you have to re execute. You have to re attempt, right? Re execute that, uh, that you have to re patch that exception. You haven't executed that exception yet. So you have to start from there. And in case of hardware uh, resolving mechanism, If uh, exception TLB miss is handled by hardware, uh, that is typically that is the typical case. You know, most of CPU vendors are providing hardware-based mechanism to resolve that simple TLB miss. Intel x86 and uh, ARM also. So that is processor. ARM, uh, Cortex A9. And then uh, inside this Cortex A9, we have a system register called translation table base register. I'm trying to explain how you know, the entry you are looking for uh, is, can be found by hardware and placed into you know, here. It is very simple, you know, hardware register. So PPDR register, translation table. This is translation table, right? Translation table base register. So that Register should be programmed beforehand. So operating system create this page table and program this register. Let's say that location. Location is 1,000. Uh, 1 million. Five bits. So 1 million. So then that should be programmed to 1 million. 
So that is fully synthetic. So basically, okay. so then CPU knows. If the CPU knows the start location of patient, then what you have to what you have to do is based on this virtual address, based on that this virtual address, find the you need to find out, find out which entry is the one you are looking for. So the indexing scheme is very simple. So you have one million, one million virtual pages, right? You have one million entries. One million virtual pages, one million entries. So indexing from this to offset the information is contained in a virtual page number. So virtual address. Virtual address. Uh, we are assuming 4 kilobyte page size for the last 12 It's not used. And then upper 10 kibit is virtual page. Virtual page number zero, virtual page number one, and so on. It's 4 kilobyte page. So it's the power of 12, 12, right? So last of 12 bit is talking about which data you are looking for within this you know, page. So that's virtual page number. So this offset, the PTE you are looking for can be indexed by virtual page number. So the formula is this, right? So TTDR plus virtual page number. Virtual page number. That is the entry. That is the entry you are looking for. But depending on, but depending on the PTE size. In, uh, in case of ARM um, Cortex A9, uh, PTE, which PTE is four byte in size. Four byte. We are, we are going to talk about the detailed format of this PTE today. So PTE, which PTE is four byte in size. That means uh, in this formula, you have to do multiply by four. First entry, offset zero. Second entry offset four, eight, C, and so on. So based on virtual page number, you are indexing PTE, but you have to do multiplication like this. Okay. Then how to do multiplication? It's very simple process. What you, what you can do is we can left to be left to shift. That's what how do you do it? Very simple operation, to be left to shift. That is the same effect. So multiplying is number by two. So the CPU, by implementing this, implementing this shifter and adder, on adder, right? Adder and shifter. And CPU can pinpoint, okay, location is this one, some entry. Then read that entry from memory and place it to play. That is called hardware-based hardware-based page table. Page table of page table of hardware-based page table. So you have a page table and you want to find out PT. That is typically provided. Oh, uh, any question so far? Okay, how about, how about, you know, page port? Page port is taking a lot of time. A very complicated process. Let's assume uh, while you are accessing this uh, memory location, patch, decoding, execution, memory access, and write back. But during this memory access stage, right? So let's say R1 is, uh, R1 is 1,000. So you are generating 1,000 virtual address. So not same address. Uh, this virtual address for instruction patch. So, uh, separate collection. That is virtual address for instruction patch for memory access. Okay. So you are generating uh, 1,000. So you have separate, typically you have separate DLB. This DLB is for instruction. There be four uh, instruction, and this DRB is four data. 
typically CPU is provided separate here for instruction access, instruction access, and data access, instruction read and data access. So during memory access stage, assume that you have a page for it, then what do you want to do? Uh, you have to ask page for it, right? That means uh, the page in the hard disk should be placed in main memory. That is taking millions of millions of cross-seconds. Roughly, it takes some few you know, milliseconds to copy that guy into main memory. So that is translated to millions of cross-seconds from CPU to memory. So that is running at four gigahertz. Four years in milliseconds, right? So if you compare that number, then you know, roughly four billion, four million class cycles to a result of page four. Then uh, you don't want to, right? You don't want to CPU from CPU point of view, uh, you don't want to sit and wait until uh, page four is resolved, right? So do you, do you want to do this? Um, uh, memory access, memory access, memory access, right? That is four million class cycles. Then, uh, then you know, right back. So you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to wait four million class cycles, right? So that is the operating system is involved. Right? So you have a page four, then that is the process. The operating system, operating system is doing. Uh, operating system. Uh, so actually, you know, second grade, a virtual address. This virtual address, one thousand. 1000 is re recorded in some register, fault register, some fault register. CPU is providing some special register to store that information. Okay, we have a phase fault by accessing uh, that memory location. Better to show you an example problem. So that is our next uh, lecture or point. Okay, this one. Data fault address register. In in case of Cortex A9, in case of ARM CPU, ARM CPU is providing this register. Data fault, right? Data fault, right? You have a data fault. So while accessing the memory location page for data fault. And that information is stored in that register. Uh, for uh, instruction access, right? so instruction port, right? instruction port address register. While, okay, during instruction patch, LDR, during instruction patch, you got page port. Then that virtual address is stored in that register. Okay. By hardware. So, second bullet, right? Porting address. The porting address is already stored in some special register. So based on that, you can find out PT, right? Page table, you can find out PT, right? PTBR base location. And then virtual page number is false. So you know PT and virtual page number. So that register contains uh, this information. Okay. So how do you can find out PT? Then the thing you have to do is locate corresponding page on hard disk. So the OS needs to figure out okay, which page uh, you need to you need to copy. Which page you want to access, right? This page, right? And so brief. The first brief, choose a page to replace in the main memory. Uh, the thing is, you know, what if the main memory is you know fully populated with pages? There are many different programs to run, right? So it is fully populated. All the pages, physical pages are being are being utilized. That means you have to find out what you have to find out big data. There are so many pages, 16 uh, gigabyte divided by 4K, so 4 million, 4 million different physical pages. Among these 4 million pages, you have to find out big data. Which one do you want to kick out? Because you need to place this new page into the main memory. That means you have to sacrifice one guy. Okay, I want to I want to remove this guy and place it here. Kick out this guy and place it here. Then you need you need some policy. Why? Why why this guy? Right. 
So which algorithm do you want to use? What kind of algorithm? LRU, right? LRU is, you know, LRU is obvious, uh, you know, algorithm to uh, select a victim because LRU is what? Least recently used. Least recently. Probably that is least recently used. All other 4 billion minus one you know, pages, you know, got, you know, access to recently. But this guy is not access. But implementing LRU, if you remember cache discussion, it's very expensive, right? Think about you know four way, four way set associated thing, right? So four vectorial, right? So that means four, three, two, one. Four way set associated cache. Right? So you have a set, set some set, then four candidate. Uh, so 24, 24, you know, different uh, access uh, history, right? But here, uh, how many, right? Four million, four million different pages, then you know, four million text factorial. Right? So you don't want to do that, you don't want to implement the true LRU, right? That is too much, right? So some you know approximate algorithm should be used to select the victim. So that is in the PowerPoint, but I don't want to explain it because that is uh, uh, that is too much probably for this class. So anyway, uh, you need to find out. We find out the victim to you know, victim create new page into main menu. Right? Then uh, the, the then you know even worse, right? What if this page is dirty? What if this page uh, you know main memory is volatile memory, right? If you turn off the power, then data is gone. And then you know the eventually that that you know dirty page. Let's say you start the page. Meaning uh, you extracted, you extracted four instructions. Four. The new data is stored here. Four instructions, then the updated information is here. And that page should be uh, should be stored back to hard disk eventually. So that is third page. Then when you when you select this page as a victim. You have to make sure you store that in two hard disk first. Then place a new one. So if dirty, write the page to hard disk first. Then place a new page into the place. And then read the test page. Then you place that guy into here. And the second from the last may interrupt it, place a runoff run graphic. So we are in the middle of executing LDR instruction, right? In memory access stage, we got page four. So that means when you come back, when you come back after resolving uh, page four, you have to re-execute that LDR instruction. CPU, right? You have to re-execute that instruction from instruction patch, recording its instruction. So that is uh, the red one. Start. 14 instructions. That is the 14 instructions. 14 instructions. It's very complicated process. Ooh, any question about this? Okay, so that is about a TLB, and let's stop uh, this PowerPoint here, then jump into. Next PowerPoint. But you know, think about this. Think about this issue. So it's some animation, probably it is good uh, recap, I think. So you have a uh, processor, CPU, processor. Uh, inside the processor, Intel Core i7 or Cortex A9, you have a CPU core that is generating virtual address. And here you have uh, TLB, translation of the <coughs> And then uh, probably you want to you want to uh, you want to know you want to know this terminology memory management and reporting. TLB is placed inside the MMU memory management and check this hardware. So MMU is doing TLB lookup. The MMU hardware that is doing TLB lookup, then find out uh, you know try to find out uh, translation information. Generate page address. 
So in this uh, example, we assume cache is accessed with this purpose. And cache is implementing write back policy. Write back means what? Only cache will be updated. If you execute the store instruction, then only cache will be updated first. Main memory error later on, because we don't want to access main memory. Main memory is so slow. This guy is very slow. You know, even slower, right? But it's super slow. And so, and cache is fast. So we assume cache is implemented by time. So if you miss the cache, then you have to access main memory. So main memory contains page data. The operating system is creating the page data. So at the beginning, everything is stored in hard disk, then that is placed. That is placed in main memory on page basis. 4K by page is placed in. Then uh, you miss the cache, uh, then uh, from main memory to cache. It is a block based uh, transfer. Typical block size, <clears throat> 64 gig K by cache, cache block, right? 64 byte or 32 byte uh, block. That is the typical size, cache line size. So, uh, block based uh, based uh, transfer from main memory to cache. Then, what if you execute store instruction? Store instruction, then uh, only cache will be updated with the new data because it is implementing write back policy. Right back. Okay. And then, uh, when? When that guy will be placed in main memory? When do you think? New data is placed in main memory. And this guy is in place. Cache is very small. Cache is very small. Sometimes you need to bring in new, new memory block for cache. Then you have to select the big tape. Big tape, right? Big tape. When then big tape is, uh, big, big tape is dirty, then uh, that big tape is, you know, the dirty cache line will be written back to the but eventually that should be that should be placed in hard disk because the main memory is so still a lot of time. One of the power effects one. So when, when you place this guy to a uh, hard disk, when the page is replaced, the page is replaced, dirty page will be replaced. That is the four picture. Okay, that is the one. Then let's move on to um, exception. Let's play with a specific example with our Cortex A9, right? Uh, page table and translation. This one, Chongjo, please. Okay, with virtual uh, memory, uh, what you have to do is, you know, two things. Uh, first thing is address translation. That is primary reason, a primary reason why uh, primary, you know, primary function you have to implement virtual address, the physical address translation. And the translation is based on page, each page. And then uh, with virtual memory support, uh, it is providing some uh, some uh, some important some other important uh, functions like uh, like this. The page table can do this. The page table contains translation information. Not only the physical page number, but you have. 
you can have some some attribute of that page, the property of that page, attribute or property. For example, uh, the first you know page can be only can be <clears throat> read only. This one is a read only page, and some or so it is all read readable and writable page. So you can impose some restriction, some attribute access permission, readable, writable. And also you can say, uh, okay, this page is executable. Okay. Uh, executable, X, executable, X, E, executable. Meaning uh, you can you can do instruction patch. Instruction patch, then there is a, uh, you want to execute you know, your program. So you can set you know, those property also uh, you can impose some of the restrictions, right? Okay, that page can be accessed only when you are, when you have enough privilege. For example, if you have a PL1 privilege, you can access this page. If you have a PL0, privilege level 0, then you can, what is privilege level 0 in our user mode, right? User mode. And privilege level 1, examples are supervisor mode. And IRQ, like FRQ, system mode, and so on. Okay. So if you have enough privilege, then you can access, access this, this page. Right? So you can, so the point is, you can uh, set some attribute or property okay, of the page. In this way, uh, some you know, protection. protection is provided. On, uh, on page basis, you can. So there is privilege information, PL0, uh, user mode in R, PL1, uh, supervisor mode, system mode, IRP mode, and so on. The real stuff now. Okay, this one. Jisoo? Can Jisoo? Hyunji? Park Hyunji? Avon Okay, Minji. Okay. Are you Okay, done. Okay, thanks. Uh, you know, Cortex A9, Cortex A9 is providing four different uh, page sizes. Okay, four different page sizes. Not only 4K byte, but you know, 64K byte page, one megabyte page, and 16 megabyte page. So they are using different numbers. 4K byte, they are they, they call it small page. 64K byte page, they call it large page. On Mac section and super section. Uh, today we will talk about a uh, section translation. Section. Section is most simple. Uh, section translation is most simple. Okay. That is why uh, uh, we want to talk today. And that is also basis for other page translations. Super section translation, large, small page translation. That is a basis. Section translation. Okay, we will focus on section, one megabyte section translation. Okay. So virtual address in Cortex A9, uh, A9, 32 bit, and physical address 32 bit. 32 bit, and you have main unit. 
And then virtual address. Right? Let me draw you know similar uh, figure, similar figure like this. Virtual address. You are creating four gigabyte virtual space. So this virtual space and physical memory uh, are are you know logically divided into one megabyte. You are four megabyte, four bit, four four k byte. One megabyte you know, section is here. So each one is one megabyte, one megabyte. Then the last one, so virtual section number zero, one megabyte. Section is one megabyte, okay? So virtual section number one, second, one megabyte. And the last one is what? Yeah. Four gigabyte divided by one megabyte, then four K. So last uh, section, virtual section number 4K minus one. K is 10 and 10. Okay. Then, uh, okay, then the main memory, same thing goes to main memory. That is logically divided into one megabyte physical section number zero. Okay, first one, second one megabyte, physical section number one, and so on. Okay. So they can be sold to bit. So you can install up to you know uh, four gigabyte uh, actual main memory. Four gigabyte. Okay. Then uh, the translation, right? So operating system is doing this mapping to run your application. Virtual section number zero. Uh, is mapped to probably what is called section number one. Virtual section number one, probably that is mapped to, I don't know. Yeah, let's call this. It's called section number yeah. 10. Yes. Simple example, 10. Then, uh, then uh, you, so operating system also created page table for this translation, right, in main memory. Translation information. Uh, okay, so, so page table. Page table. Uh, you, need, you need to have how many APTs? How many people for translation? How many? <laughs> Can you? 4K, right? You have 4K different sections, right? 4K. Virtual section number zero to virtual section 4K minus one. So you need one uh, 4,096 uh, PTEs. Page table entries. Each one is page table entries. Uh, in ARM, uh, I, I told you, right? TTBR register is pointing. Operating system should program this register okay, to point the start location of page table. Okay. So then, uh, then uh, in this case, virtual section number zero is mapped to physical section number one. So what you have to record is here. So this record is physical page number section and some attribute. So here you echo the attributes. Readable, writable, read only, some protection, and so on. So physical page number. So here in this case, physical section number one. So we put one here. Okay. And then virtual section number one is mapped to physical section number 10. So in this entry, Then uh, uh, this page table is indexed. You know the start location, right? And then how to find out translation information based on virtual section number, virtual address, sorry to be, right? Virtual address, sorry to be. And we are talking about one megabyte section. That means uh, last 
centigrade is offset. Put to the power of centigrade on, on that, right? So there is offset within that page, within that section. Within section okay? And then upper Kelvin, there is virtual section number. Section number zero, section number one, two, this number, virtual section number. So, uh, you know, indexing, this indexing, this offset, this indexing, this indexing, offset is used that knowledge there. So, offset, how do you do this? Right? How do you find out PT? Simple. P, P, E, R plus. Virtual section number. And then each entry. Each entry is four byte in size. Four byte. So that is uh, so you have to do multiply by four. Okay, multiply by four again, you know, two bit left to share. So how do you will do that operation to find out PT? And that information will be placed into TLB. And now let's talk about you know PT now, right? We are curious about this PT, right? Page table entry, right? Let me show you. So there, this is the information. This is the information about you know PT format, section. Uh, if PT is describing section, actually. In the, our, you know, example, right? Section, uh, sec uh, each entry is talking about uh, providing translation information for section, right? So look at this, section. So uh, PT format, right? And super section PT format, next one, L2. Uh, small page PT format, large page, page PT format. So we have a format, right? PT format. Look at this section, uh, super section. How do you differentiate this two? by looking at this? By looking at bit 18 and bit one, I can tell okay, zero one, and that PT is translation information section for section. Okay, and then uh, one and one, then uh, PT is super section translation information. Uh, and you know, last two bit is zero one, then large page translation. Uh, one, I don't care. Empty is not here. Don't care. Anything is okay, zero or one. If uh, the bit is one, it's small page translation. Let's go back here. So, section, uh, look at this. Uh, here, uh, this green. Green is uh, physical section number. Physical address, sorry, one, two, twenty. Right? So physical address, physical address, oh, sorry, two bit. Sorry, two bit physical address. Then, uh, uh, two, you know, two sections, right? Uh, twenty bit is offset. Same offset, this virtual, uh, virtual offset and physical offset. It is, you know, actually concatenated. How do you generate virtual, uh, physical address? So it is providing only physical section number. If we have a TLB kit, page table, right? Page table is only providing physical section number. Page per section number. Page per section number. So page table is only providing a you know, section number, not offset. Okay. Virtual section number zero is mapped to uh, you know, page per section number one. That information is only provided. Okay. So sorry, two bit address. So you have for 20 bit and 20 bit. That is uh, physical section number. Okay. This physical section number is provided by TLB if TLB happens. And then 
this offset is simply copied. That information is simply copied into last centimeter. Okay. So again, PLB is only providing pitch protection number. And then uh, you know, 20 bit is simply concatenated or patching right? uh, from this virtual address. Virtual address. Okay. So that is why, uh, you know, PT, uh, inside PT, you have, you are specifying this pitch call of the 31 to 20. That is pitch call section number. So pitch call address 31 to zero. And this one, pitch call address 31 20. Section number. The last 20 bit pitch call address from the address 19 to 0, 20 bit. Okay. So that information, that information is contained in uh, each uh, PT and some attributes. So we are not going to talk about this attribute. Okay. So uh, uh, address translation is important. Okay. So attribute is specified uh, with, with those two bit. Attribute NS, uh, NG, AP, access permission, right? uh, and PX, AP. Using those bit field, you can uh, specify attribute or property. Readable, writable, privilege, executable, that kind of properties. Right? Uh, any, any questions so far? Okay, with that said, let me uh, show you demo, okay? Demo code. So that is the one, then probably I need to show you TTDR information, right? Translation table, base register. So that is a format, right? TTBR0, TTBR0 register. Uh, here you have to specify uh, start location, start location of page table. Uh, and then the thing is, uh, page table should start, should start at, uh, at, should start. There are some, you know, restriction. Uh, it cannot be start from any, any location in memory. Uh, because, you know, page table size, 4096 pt is in each entry four bytes so page table size right page table is this one multiplied by four four bytes then 16 kilobyte page table size right? so page table can be located at at 16 kilobyte online memory location so that this one should be 16 kilobyte online, online memory location. So example is 16K K is what? Two to the power of 14, right? So, so for example, uh, that can be, location can be four three zeros, four three zeros. So three zeros, 12 bit, right? And four is what? One zero zero, so two, right? 14, 14 zeros. So four zero zero and or eight eight three zeros uh, in that memory location, in those memory locations. So that is you know sixteen kilobyte online memory locations. Some some more. Right? So that is one thing because you can only specify by looking at if you look at this uh, register, you can specify only. You know some you know x x is uh, fourteen I think fourteen okay only thirty one b two and fourteen and one more register you have to check is uh, system control register. 
using this system control register, uh, look, look at this, last bit, M bit, MMU enabled, MMU, right? So TLB, TLB is located inside uh, hardware core memory management unit. So you need to enable that MMU to use TLB. So MMU enabled is controlled by that register, system uh, control register. Okay, two registers you have you have to have in mind. Okay, that now uh, let me show you uh, demo. So demo is this one. MMU. Uh, so I created a pro, uh, project for you. In this demo, probably we don't have to have uh, this interrupt vector table, but you know, I. I I put our own interrupt vector table and vector base register is set with this. Then, okay, translation information first, right? Translation table first. This one is page table. Example, a page table. So what? We want to achieve with this uh, this three entries. So in our page table, we have we have only three entries. That word, right? This one, first entry. So that means uh, here. So we have uh, here one. Five B e, six. E, that is uh, information in first PTE, first page table entry. Right? So page table entry starts uh, from this uh, label. Okay. So we are going to impose some restriction. Okay. Page table, right? Page table should start at sixteen kilobyte aligned memory location. How to make it, uh, you know, possible? How to make it located at 16 kilobyte aligned memory location? So you need to play with the Linker script. Check out this CL uh, uh, MMU table. Check out this Linker script LD Linker. Linker script is creating layout layout of your binary. You compile it. You compile your code, right? Compile your code and final layout is generated. Final layout is generated based on the linker script. Okay, linker script, check out this. Source code. Uh, so here, right? CAD uh, MMU table. That should be aligned at 16 kilobyte. Okay, 16384. That is 16 kilobyte, right? So that should start from that memory location. There is a directive. We are imposing some restriction. Okay, final layout. Right. So Linker script. Oh, there is one thing. Uh, then let's talk about translation table. Right. So we have uh, three, this one, three uh, PTE entries. That word. That is actual PTE entry. Okay. So sec sec is variable. So you initialize sec to zero. Section actually, section, section number. Section number is zero, so zero, right? You replace this uh, variable with zero. So first entry will be uh, this number, one, five, B, six, this one. And second entry is what? Uh, section is, you know, changed, right? Section is zero. Then you are adding this number, two million, right? So second entry. Second entry, this information. So that means what? Uh, two million, right? So two five zeros, right? So five hex number, right? So that means here zero x, uh, two, then one five d six d six. 
that is the information, right? Two. So if you look at if you look at PT, if you look at PT E for section translation, this one. You need to check out this, right? Uh, a section uh, PTE uh, format for the section. Right? Uh, look at this. So 0 to 19, okay, 20 bit. 20 bit is specifying attribute. Right? 0, bit 0 to 19. So bit zero to ninety, sorry to bit, right? Oh, uh, sorry to bit, right? PT, let me make it bit. Right? That is, you know, four by four. Four, sorry to bit. Right? So if you look at that you know, PT format, right? Uh, first to twenty bit, specifying some attribute property. Okay, and then a uh, 12 bit. 12 bit is uh, specifying virtual section number. Okay, then uh, check out this number one five. You know this one. The last 20 bit that goes to one five d e six. That goes to you know attribute. That is attribute field. Okay, so in this you know first entry, you are specifying virtual section number zero. Virtual section number zero, right? So second entry, right? Two. Second entry, you have the same attribute. One five D E six, right? Same attribute, and virtual section number is two. Okay. Then two. So and then third entry, third entry before you know before so before setting up. Uh, before you know this this one you are doing this well you are doing addition right uh this sec uh, variable is what now you know two million right initially zero then you are doing addition so now two million then you are it is two million right sec sec two million and then you are adding uh one more two million right so four million so four so sec, uh, third entry will be what? 0x4, same number, same attribute. 1.5, right? 1.5 DE6. Okay. So that means we want to create that, we want to create that uh, uh, mapping, right? So virtual section, virtual section number zero, virtual section number zero, right? The first entry contains virtual section number zero's translation. So virtual section number, uh, you know, virtual section number, let me So we want to create that entry. Virtual section number is corresponding to physical section number zero. Then it's talking about this, the first entry is talking about that method. Okay. And then second entry, right? Physical section number two. Physical number two, then zero, number zero, one, physical section number two. So virtual section number one is mapped to physical section number two. Okay, so second entry is talking about that map. Okay. And the last one, uh, virtual section number two. So third entry. So the entry is talk, uh, has translation information four, two, three, and four. So that is map two. So we are creating that mapping with that you know page table, the simple page table. So then uh, let's go to our assembly code. So system control register. So with the system control register, 
you are doing MMU enable, right? So simply read uh, system control register information. So just read something, read. And where's TTBR? TTBR? Read TTBR. Translation table. Research. And apps. Okay, read uh, TTBR. Okay, so MMU disable. Okay, so here disable MMU. Disable MMU. By touching a system control register. Story time. So this is important information. So before, let me, because we have three minutes left. So let me explain uh, this way. So we are enabling uh, MMU here. So before that, before enabling, before enabling this translation, here with this translation, you are initializing the memory. Initializing memory with that information. That information. You are doing, you are storing something, right? R0, 1 million, R2, 2 million, 4 million. And the data you want to write. Then you are executing store instruction. So by executing store instruction, what you want to do is, uh, what? So 1 million location with this physical section. Then you want to write using that store instruction. First store instruction. R3 is 11, right? And you are writing 11 to that memory location, 1 million. So here, the first location, you are writing 1, 1. Okay? And second store instruction. Second store instruction, uh, R second, 4, right? 2, 2. 2, 2, 2. 2 million. Okay. So here, 2 million. Right? Here you are writing 2. And then third, two instruction, you are writing 4, 4 at that location. You are initializing memory with that information. Okay. And then you enable. After that, you are enabling MMU. That means uh, you know, you are doing translation. That is mapped to here, this one is mapped to there, and this one mapped to there. So in your program, what if you access? What if you, what if you read? So enable, then, you know, you, you want to read from location 1 million. What's your... So you are executing LDR. R6, R0, R6, R0, LDR, R6, R1. This one is 1 million, 1, 5 zeros. This one, 2, 5 zeros. So you are reading from 1 million, you are reading from 2 million, right? But this one is virtual address. So you are virtual address one five zeros and second two five zeros right? virtual address. Then because you enable the MMU and this table is prepared for you, right? And now uh, a CPU parser will use that translation information to generate this call address, right? So the first load instruction you are accessing one million, but TLB says Okay, one million information, one million location is mapped to two million. So, uh, two million, right? So, so physical address. So, in response to that virtual address, uh, physical address, two million, two million will be you know, provided to actual memory. So in your program, you are accessing 1 million, right? But you end up accessing not this, not this data, but this data. This location is called 1 million location. 
five zeros, location zero, location two, five zeros, the location four, five zeros, for physical address, not virtual address, physical address. So virtual address is generated in one million. Then translation table says, okay, one million is corresponding to two million. So uh, it seems like you are accessing one million. So you, it seems like you are accessing this data, but in reality, you are accessing this data. Okay. So second instruction, second instruction, virtual address two million. So virtual address four, two million, and according to the page table, two, right? Zero, section number zero, virtual section number one and two. Page table says, okay, that, uh, that virtual section, is corresponding to virtual section, physical section number four. Physical section number four. <clears throat> okay, so TLB will provide four million. So it seems like your code it seems like you are accessing two million that data, right? But in, in reality, you are accessing this data. Okay, 47. Yeah, I, I, so I, I am able to show you demo <coughs> next time. Okay, so we ran out of time. So show you, probably you, you run this code yourself, okay? Then you can find out. Okay, that is it for today. Yeah. 
아, 그래서 또 끝났구나. 서비스를 통해서 이제 이거 보면 알 텐데. 누가 그런지 인터뷰를 누가 그런지 판단하고 비명가 그렇구나. 이렇게 보면 아, 테스트 끝났네. 그러면 다시 OS 스케줄러가 인복팅이 되고 원래 폴트 우리가 일어났던 프로세스 페이지 폴트가 일어났던 프로세스 다시 일어났어요. 굉장히 복잡한 과정이 붙은 거죠. 그리고 제가 궁금한 게 이전에는 택시나 앱을 활성화시키지 않은 상태로 속을 파는 게 저는 피지컬 어드레스 있잖아요. 직접 버추얼 어드레스와 피지컬 어드레스 이렇게 플랜 제품이라고 아 그냥 1대1 메시지 1대1 원밀리언이면 원밀리언 그대로 나오는 플랜 제품 그대로 버추얼과 피지컬 어드레스가 그냥 같은 거 예를 들면 이걸 안 시키는 거죠. 근데 그러면 저희 제드보드 메모리 크기가 작으면 어떻게 안될 수가 있나요? 어 그렇죠. 그러니까 지금 제드보드에서는 어떻게 되어 있냐면 메인 메모리가 512 메가밖에 안 돼요. 아 그럼 그 이상은 안 되는 건가요? 그렇지. 아. 여기 바깥에 이 영역 바깥에 메모리를 액세스하면 네. 폴트지 폴트. 아. 폴트가 남는다. 그러니까 데이터 어버스라든지 아. 우리가 익셉션 벡터 테이블을 해보면 네. 어, 데이터 어버스 아까 얘기했지만 어, 패치 어버스, 패키지 어버스 IRQ 백터도 있죠. 네. 그게 하나 있게 일어납니다. 아, 뭐, 그, 그, 존재하지도 않는 그게 존재하지도 않는 메모리를 접근을 하네. 그러면 폴트지. 아, 하드에 아, 그, 근데 그 IO 메모리 매칭 때문에 결국에는 이렇게 돼 있기는 해요. 메모리 매칭 때문에. 네. 그러니까 그그 그 저희 막 LED나 스위치 접근할 때도 로드로 하는 거예요. 그 주소가 다 1대1로 매칭이 되어 있다는 말씀이신 것 같은데 그러면 어쨌든 32비트 어드레스가 존재하긴 하는데 그쵸. 그 중에서 이제 512메가바이트 범위를 넘어가는 걸 접근하면 더욱더 발생할 수 있는 거죠? 그렇죠. 그렇죠. 그리고 여기서 제대보드를 한번 보면 제드, 메모리 매포 제드보드 이렇게 하드웨어를 이렇게 회사에서 제공을 하면 이제 메모리 맵을 알려주고 우리는 이런 메모리 맵을 구현했다. 내려보면 이렇게 메모리 맵이 돼 있죠. 네. 어, DDR의 경우는 여기서부터 여기까지 사용하는 거예요. 1메가부터 사용할 수 있는 거죠. 이 공간을. 어, 실제로는 512메가바이트가 네. 달려있기 때문에 요보다는 요 반만 사용하는데 네. 그리고 만약에 이 상태에서 이쪽 메모리를 저, 접근을 했다 만약에 네. 4, 4로 시작하면 네. 그러면 페이스 폴트가 아니 아, 폴트가 나는 거야 네. 폴트 네. 지금 존재하지 않은 표현하지 않은 그런 그 디바이스를 액세스 하려고 하면 하드웨어적으로 폴트를 그런 익셉션을 발생시키는 거죠 그렇죠. 네. 그러니까 이게 메모리 스페이스가 완전히 다 완전히 다 그냥 완전히 다 사용되는 건 아니고 네. 군데군데 사용되지 않는 그런 공간이 있어요. 아. 그런 공간을 액세스하려고 하면 CPU가 그러면 폴트가 그러면 익셉션이 걸리는 거죠. 아, 네. 데이터 아. 어버트나 프리페이지 어버트나 네. 어, 그런 게 걸리는 거죠. 아. 예. 그게 하드웨어적으로 그렇게 걸리도록 설계가 돼 있어요. 아. 어. 존재하지 않는 네. 공간 비어있는 비어 있는 공간에서 접근하는 것은 그러면은 익셉션이 될수 있을 것 같아요.